Mario Kart 8! It's the 8th game in the Mario Kart series! Or the 11th. Or the 12th. Or the 16th. I remember looking at this 8 and thinking to myself, Aw, oh, that's, that, that's adorable. That's a, it's like a little infinity symbol. It's like, a, it's, oh, that's, that's quaint. Now I know that it was actually a threat. All right, you know how this works. I'm gonna rank all 96 tracks in Mario Kart 8, and by the time I'm done, you will have fallen asleep. But real quick, I think I should first bring up a few things that, while I don't think they're gonna factor into the rankings in a substantial way, might still provide a little bit of extra context for anyone who cares. I, I mean, we'll take what we can get here. You saw the runtime. I can't explain everything. First, while I love Mario Kart and 8 is probably my overall favorite, my enthusiasm does tend to decrease every time there's more than three red shells on my ass, and I only have coins. Which only happens every... infinity. Infinity, it was a threat. Like, I know what I signed up for, what I've been signing up for since 2014, or 2003 even, and it's not nearly as bad as, say, Mario Kart Wii, but... Jesus Christ, there's a difference between lol get good and just not being allowed to play the game for 20 seconds straight sometimes. But then they added 200cc and always forgive it. That's right, I'm that guy. I vastly prefer playing 200cc over any other speed in the game. About 75% of the footage you'll be seeing is me on 200cc. It may or may not be a slight factor into how some of these rankings play out, but it's almost always for the better, don't worry. So there, official review. I like Mario Kart 8 until the lightning item reminds me that I don't. But we're ranking the tracks themselves. Not how much bloodshed happens on them, but there is one other thing I do wanna bring up before we get started. I just wanna make a blanket statement right now that applies to the rest of the video so I don't have to repeat myself 300 times, but I do gotta real quick bring up the discourse surrounding the booster course pass that most of these tracks don't look as high quality graphically as base game courses and that some of the NPC spectators are unnecessary necessarily huge. And here's the thing, they're not wrong. You notice it, I notice it, I agree with all of you. This is an objective fact. Big Toad is a reality. Continue to speak your truth. I personally just don't really care. I don't want to talk about how grass looks repeatedly ad nauseum for half of this video. I don't know what it is with Nintendo fans and grass, but that ain't me. If I stop to smell the roses, yeah, a lot of things do look kinda whack sometimes including the roses, but in the middle of a hectic race where my focus lies elsewhere, I personally tend to give a lot more leeway to these kinds of things. Nobody's wrong if they don't, that's just me. But hey, if at any point over the next two hours you disagree with anything I say or feel strongly about something I failed to bring up at all, feel free to yell at me in the comments and I promise I'll read the first eight words of it at least. All right, let's do it, let's go. Uh, this was a doozy. This was a doozy. Uh, I wrote and rewrote the order of things countless times. Even now, having finalized the script and sitting here recording, even now, there's still like 12 spots that I would go back and change again. But this, this video has to come out sometime this decade. Pink gold peach isn't getting any younger here. <laughs> So before I started putting all these courses in numerical order, I first sorted them into different tiers. We of course have the top 10, then A, B, C, D, and F, but there's one course that I put in its own tier below F, and most of you can see where this is going. Yes, 3DS Toad Circuit is dead last and in its own tier because of course. The sky's also blue, the grass is also green. Wait, shit, I promised I wasn't gonna say anything about grass. Look, is it an easy target? Absolutely, yes, 100%. And realistically, I can maybe pick from a few other F tier courses to put here instead, and believe me, I tried. But every time I ask myself, why? This isn't even like, why did they choose this over insert my favorite course not in this game here? Just why? in general. And this is one of the headliners in the booster course pass. Like, I, I guess at least they got the worst one out of the way early. I'd probably be more flabbergasted if this was like wave four or something, but still, they led with this. And the funny thing is, as a first track in Mario Kart 7 itself, I think it's a decently solid enough course. Like, the glider pad doesn't activate until lap two, and so you could drive around the course once regularly before the game then teaches you how the gliding mechanic works. You get to soar over another part of the track you already drove past. I even think choosing to mushroom off this ramp or save it to cut through the pipes up ahead is also low-key kind of cool. Like, there is a genuine argument to be made. This is one of the best first courses in the series, if 
we're talking about their original first appearances. If we're talking about paid DLC that came out eight years later on another game, then uh, the only genuine argument is bass boosted toad sound effects. All right, I spent two minutes on Toad Circuit and I have, uh, let's see, uh, 95 courses to go. Oh no. Now onto the F tier, or as I called it on Tier Maker, more like Mario Kart Hey Deluxe Booster Course ASS! Although I know I have three tiers past C down here, one of which is simultaneously a joke and dead serious, for all intents and purposes, everything below C I usually try to avoid picking when playing online or with friends. But starting off the courses that are D'er than D, we have Riverside Park. And guys, I swear on my life, this is honest to God a f***ing park, in which there is also a river. I wanted to at least bump this up one or two spots for the admittedly mildly amusing walking piranha plants, but I, I didn't have it in me. I have nothing in me. This course is nothing to me. There's some decent spots to mushroom through, but like, that's it. It is a park. There is a river. Cool. The only thing that saved this from being in direct competition with Toad Circuit as my least favorite in the game is driving through the waterfall at the end. But also, there is a waterfall at the end. And this course isn't in at least C tier? Let me reiterate, there is a waterfall at the end, and it's second from the bottom. This is a travesty! But at the end of the day, take solace in the fact that this park has a river. Okay, good news guys, it took me a minute, but I remembered why 3DS Toad Circuit didn't come out in Wave 4. It's because 1DS Mario Circuit came out in Wave 4 instead. And really, this low in a list this big, it really is a game of inches here. These are the most unthreatening fireballs that have ever been thrown at me in a Mario game, and I've never been hit by them once in my whole entire life, but they are there. I guess. And cutting in between the trees of the mushroom is kind of neat, but th that's all I got. Even going back to the whole first courses argument, I got nothing to say about this one. Let's -a go somewhere else. Wait, no, not here. I meant let's -a go somewhere that isn't a desert. Desert courses in Mario Kart games have an uphill battle. A battle that they almost always lose. And it's not like I can't appreciate a good desert. Mario Wonder just came out and that desert world might not just be my favorite Mario desert, but like the best world in that whole entire game. Even in non-Mario games, the desert's probably my favorite part of both Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, although uh, Gerudo Town alone is probably doing 60% of the work there. But for some reason, as soon as go-karting is involved, I'm just straight up not having a good time. Driving under a pokey without getting hit is pretty satisfying, but that's like the only thing this course has going for it. And even then, your only reward is a single coin, which you can get plenty of without risking blisters. I don't wanna be here. It ain't no lie. I want this race track out that door, baby. Try, 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 try. That is the only take that you're getting. I don't, I don't care. Here's our first Wii U course of the list. I almost always never care about what cups tracks are placed in, but the fact that the track before Bowser's Castle and Rainbow Road is Bone Dry Dunes, that is f***ing hilarious. And what a fitting name. This course leaves me bone dry. Let me double check real quick. Nope, not even a wiggle. Yep, two desert courses back to back. I initially had dry dry over this one, but at the last second I switched them and I, the only thing that made me do it was this boat you drive by where toads throw coins at you and they look like they still have their skin on them. So, you know, props to them for that. But this course is 90% aggressively boring. And the other 10% consists of this part of the track with the dry piranha plant. The sand is slippery on this part, and I feel like no matter what I do, I can never drive through this part without crashing into something. And does anybody ever not take the anti-gravity path? The only reason I have footage of the second path is I tried to get a little cute on 200cc and like it to put me down here for some reason. But uh, yeah, again, do people actually willingly not take this path? It's the only good part of Bone Dry Dunes, and ironically, it has the most bones in it. So it's been a while since I last played Mario Kart DS, and it's been an eternity since I played Super Circuit, and I didn't actively look up footage of this next course from either of those games while writing this video, so when I hear people say that this version of Sky Garden is a complete bastardization of those past versions, I can't directly comment on the validity of that. I want to focus on just the eight deluxe versions on their own terms for the most part. That said, all I can confidently say is that I get almost nothing out of this course except for the banging music. The only other part of note are these two leaves you can bounce on, but unless there's something I'm missing, I think it's honestly just 
faster to not use them and just keep driving on the road. It's possible I'm subconsciously ranking this lower than I should because MK8 already has a far superior Sky Course that beats this in every way. It is not a favorable comparison in the slightest, but even if it didn't exist, I can't imagine this Sky Garden would have fared much better either way. This is the final course of the F tier, and unlike Sky Garden, I actually can comment on the changes from the original version to this one. And this is one of the only times for this entire video I'm explicitly factoring a change made from a previous version into my ranking. Because the changing time of day was literally the only thing Sunset Wilds had going for it back on Super Circuit, and now it has NOTHING! You lose! If this version retained the different times of day, it would, no joke, soar from F tier to D tier somewhere. I, I don't know why I said soar. Hell, even the tour version of this track retained it. People were even hoping Nintendo would patch the sunset of Sunset Wild's fame back into this course, but with the DLC over now, it's not looking like that kind of update's gonna happen for this one. So all we're left with is a bunch of whatever. Only thing that put it at the top of F tier instead of anywhere lower is I ran into the Shy Guys more than I care to admit, so I, I gotta pay some respects. We now arrive at the D tiers, or as I called it on Tier Maker, D. I, I, I called D tier D. Everything until the top 10 is just a letter. I'm, I'm sorry I got your hopes up. D tier is like the F tiers, except in these, I'm more likely to at least reluctantly play along. It's F tiers, but they have more girth. And the more girth, the better. Or maybe not better, but uh, I don't know. Ice Ice Outpost. Yeah. <laughs> yes, gamers, for those of y'all complaining that all the Booster Course DLC sucks, don't worry. At least one track from the original Wii U games DLC is also down here. I don't really have a problem with the overall track layout itself. Being able to kind of go back and forth between these two intersecting paths that keep zigzagging back and forth is neat, and all the shortcuts here require no mushrooms whatsoever, all coming down to your own skill, and it feels really good to pull these off. The theme of this course is what really puts me off. I'm a sucker for a good snow aesthetic more on those later but ice no thanks it's like in real life snow hells yeah ice hells gotta get up here and get rid of this shit for us please and thank you and this isn't a bad song far from it but they picked this for smash ultimate really i i, I don't know about that one chief ice ice outpost is perfectly fine to actually play on but uh, if looking at ice excites you, that's a you problem. We've arrived at our first Mario Kart tour track. My opinions on the tour tracks, or more specifically the tour tracks based on real world locations, are a little mixed. On the one hand, I think it's a really cool idea to have courses based on real world landmarks. It's like an interactive history lesson, and definitely the best instance of the times they tried to do that. And I'm the farthest thing from a country pride guy, but being able to virtually travel around a place you live, not in your pathetic mortal body, but instead the body of Funky Kong, is copacetic, my dudes. But because they're IRL locations that obviously aren't inherently fantastical in nature, it can lead to a lot of them feeling kind kinda samey. The fact that every lap is a different path for the most part certainly helps, and probably single-handedly raises every real-world tour course on this list a whole tier than they otherwise would be. But it can sometimes be difficult to feel like you're not just driving down yet another regular road, built by regular human hands that you've driven down in 13 other courses, except this time Big Ben happens to be around here somewhere. Some tour courses fare better than others, so some far better, but one has to be at the bottom. And somehow, it's Tokyo Blur. And I say somehow because it's Tokyo. Nintendo himself lives there. He had the home field advantage here. But alas, not only is Tokyo Blur my least favorite tour course in this game, it's in D tier. And if it wasn't for the different paths per lap thing, it'd probably be an F. From what I know about Tokyo, that of course being code for I platinumed both versions of Persona 5 and like to pretend I know what I'm talking about. The architecture and landmarks here are very much on point. The problem is it's not fun to actually race on. You see this ramp here? Congratulations, you're gazing upon the only intended shortcut in this course. Every other part of the track design is a bunch of nothing, and the only obstacles are thwomps that are pathetically easy to dodge, and also stick out like a sore thumb. Which is a problem that all these tour courses have. The drivers sticking out are one thing, cartoony crabs in the middle of a real-life intersection are another. But I feel it's most egregious here. Like, these thwomps feel like they were put here because... 
I don't know, bro. We need to put something here. If anyone from Japan is watching this, tell me, don't you just hate it when you're on your way to work, but you're running late because there's some bricks with faces in the middle of the Shudo Expressway? Yeah, this course does nothing for me. Tai Takemi herself could be randomly sitting on top of one of the thwomps, and I still couldn't score this any higher. Realistically speaking, SNES Mario Circuit 3 should probably be lower than the other two circuits we already talked about. It's the only SNES or GBA remake that remains completely flat, with no additional MK8 mechanical bells and whistles, but it gets a pass because I can understand wanting to keep one course completely untouched layout-wise for that nostalgia factor, and if we're gonna do it with any course, it might as well be a basic one from the very first Mario Kart game ever made. Nostalgia is a powerful drug. If I was alive and old enough to comprehend video games when Super Mario Kart came out, I'd probably bump this up another tier. You can call every other tour, retro track, port job lazy if you want, but I think this one is deliberate and acceptable. Still doesn't mean I'm in a rush to play on it, but shrooms do be shroomin' and the toads and shy guys on top of the floating blocks is a cute touch. Okay, when I said I'm a sucker for a good snow aesthetic, uh, there exists exceptions because it didn't really help GBA Snowland out too much. The music is doing most of the heavy lifting. I, I, I don't have much else to add beyond that. Uh, unlike the piranhas in Riverside Park, I am at least willing to give it up for these penguins. Donut Plains courses in Super Mario Kart might as well just be Mario Circuit courses, but with water. But I appreciate that Mario Kart 8 does a little more to differentiate the two. The puddles on the ground and the cloudy sky implies this race takes place shortly after a rainstorm, but that another one might be coming again later. Uh, maybe not an interesting vibe, but a, a noticeable one, I guess. I do kind of like that you can stay in the water for a shortcut or stay on land to nab an item. I feel like I never make the turn right before the Monty Mole section correctly no matter what I do. It always looks like you definitely should have fallen through that crack in the first bridge, but you don't. Uh, I don't know, whatever. Here's a cool green shell shot I totally made on purpose. And the only other IRL tour track down in D tier is London Loop. It has a bit more going on compared to Tokyo Blur, but if you held a gun to my head, took away the lap count, asked me to tell you what lap we were on, even with a 1 in 3 chance of guessing the answer, I'd still tell you to pull the trigger. You can cut past these chain chomps with a shroom, uh, you could do a trick on this bridge if it's raised, uh, if it's not raised, you can't do a trick, so don't even think about it, buster. The music jumps this up a few spots, but other than that, I Lund, don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, this one barely missed C tier, and there's an argument to be made it should be up there at least, and I get why people like this course in general, but at least in Mario Kart 8 specifically, I'm sorry, I just don't really feel much of anything for DS Shroom Ridge. Of all the courses in Mario Kart 8 that involve dodging some level of traffic and even other traffic courses in this- I keep looking at the script while I'm f***ing talking. <laughs> I looked at it while I was doing this. And I was like, yeah, I'm getting away with it. Even traffic courses in the series that aren't in this game. Out of all of them, I think Shroom Ridge is kind of at the bottom somewhere. I, I, I get the appeal. I see the appeal. But I think for me personally, I think it boils down to two big things. The first being snaking, a drifting technique in Mario Kart DS. In DS, this was one of the best tracks for doing it. But that's something you can't really do this time around, at least not nearly to the same degree. Second, I have heard some people express that this course gives vibes and nostalgic feelings of times they went on road trips, perhaps driving on their way to a family vacation or something along those lines. A viewpoint that I can definitely see, but not one I can necessarily share. I know I've went on some trips like this as a kid, but not many, or at least not many I'm able to recall. So without a mechanic, or a vibe, all I'm left with is my least favorite traffic course in the whole game. Dodging the traffic is still something, and nailing the shortcut at the end without hitting a car when you land is pretty epic, but that's unfortunately all I got. I I'm happy for everyone who can get something out of this course that I can't. Uh, if I ever get bored and have the patience to mod DS style drifting into Mario Kart 8, uh, maybe I'll see the light and I'll get back to you about that. See, this isn't so bad, huh? But good news, we're already onto the C tiers, tracks I usually won't actively pick, but will usually be happy enough to race on anyway. And the first two are tour tracks that admittedly only really escapes D tier because the whole different paths per lap thing gives tracks a lot of brownie points in my book. First, we got Rome Avanti, and real quick, full disclosure, I started writing this script before Wave 6 came out, and then kinda inserted those courses into my list after the fact, so it's possible my Wave 6 track placements could fluctuate more than all my other picks if I had more time to sit on them, but I'm pretty comfortable with this one. Any part where we're driving through the Coliseum area gets my stamp of approval, 
uh, everything else is just fine. And Paris Promenade. Unlike every other IRL tour track, the first two laps are exactly the same, but then you go through the whole track backwards in the final lap, which is worth just as many brownie points, if not slightly more. And I kind of like that there's two separate paths near the Eiffel Tower you could choose from, one being slightly shorter but giving you no items, or the other being slightly longer but has boost pads and items. Though for a solid whole week after Wave 1 released, I thought the shorter path was a mushroom-only part. Like, seriously, doesn't it look like you need a shroom over this part? But no, you could just drive over it normally. Okay, um, a little weird. But the very first thing you see upon starting the race is the location of one of the best fight scenes in John Wick 4, so I will allow it. Another C-tier course that barely escaped D. I promise it's the last time I'm saying that. Excite Bike Arena has a similar oval-shaped layout to Baby Park, except it's longer, and you can do a lot of tricks back to back which doesn't excite my bike as much as I'd like. I love performing tricks in Mario Kart games, and the layout of the ramps does slightly change every race, but it's not drastic enough to really make much of a difference, and no matter the layout, you perform so many tricks in one lap on straightaways with only two turns, and I just kind of go into a trance-like state on this course, barely thinking, just timing my R button presses and dodging the occasional mud pile. That's about it. I think the only thing that saves this course from being down in D for me is the theme. If the theming was any different, we would be lower, but it's the theme is Excite Bike, right? Like mindlessly doing trick after trick on an Excite Bike course. It's like, of course all we're doing is tricks. It makes sense, like, like, like damn bro, I, I can't argue that. All right, no more C tier, but actually D tier, but actually C tier. We are now confidently in capital T, the capital C, C, another capital T tier. And I don't really have anything to say about Cheap Cheap Beach. It's fine. It's pleasant enough, and I like that you can take water shortcuts that obviously weren't possible on DS. Has anyone ever been hit by this Cheap Cheap after the boardwalk? I sincerely doubt it. My mans has a whole course thing after him, and he currently has a 0 to 57 million kill death ratio. Mario Kart 8's iteration of Mario Circuit was probably the best Mario Circuit in the entire series back when 8 first came out, but in hindsight, it was kind of carried by the anti-gravity mechanic. Once the novelty of that wears off, it's just kind of another Mario Circuit. And yeah, duh, Mario Circuits exist solely to be Mario Circuits, but still. The music for this is also probably my least favorite out of all the Mario Circuits. The live instrument instrumentation that starts kicking in halfway through is fine, but the first half sounds like penis music. So yeah, not a bad course, just a Mario circuit. A Mario circuit with anti-gravity, but a Mario circuit. Shrooming around the pipes at the end and also hitting the glider ramp is pretty keen though. N64 Royal Raceway. Obligatory, they got rid of the castle Easter egg, which while definitely charming, is not something I'm sobbing over. It would have been cool and novel for a while, but when I play online, I'm trying to throw hands and ruin marriages, not participate in a Mario 64 role-playing lobby. All that said, simple but enjoyable enough course. Despite not being called a circuit, it's a circuit in nature, but I like the aesthetics. At least as far as base game courses go, this is probably one of the more visually appealing ones. I'm a fan of the colors. Uh, purple's my favorite color, and pink's like... a distant cousin of purple? I watched a Bob Ross video once. Also, you can barely hit this ramp without a mushroom on 200cc, so that's pretty cool. In spite of its low placement, I get why everyone loves Shroom Ridge. Despite me still placing it higher, I don't get everyone's love of Choco Mountain. Like, I don't dislike it. And by the way, I'm not just referring to the MK8 version, I'm also talking about back on 64 and DS. Like, what the hell y'all talking about when you say you could eat this course? If it wasn't for the fact Choco was in the name, I would barely be able to tell this brown sh** is supposed to be chocolate. It's not like the boulders look like a Reese's Puff or whatever, it's a regular ass boulder. The course is overall kinda mediocre-ish in my eyes, but in complete fairness. While my heart is saying, whatever, man, my brain is saying, I'm kind of surprised this made it this far up, but as far as first courses in a Mario Kart game go, were it not for the existence of Luigi Circuit and Double Dash, Mario Kart Stadium might be the best first course in the series. Mario Kart 8 was the first HD Mario Kart game, and they knew to use that to their advantage, and really start things off with a pretty effective bang. Obviously, Anti-Gravity's doing some heavy lifting here, but while I feel that wore off a bit for MK8's Mario Circuit, and probably still wore off a little bit here too, the bombastic music and the overall atmosphere really pick up the slack. Hell, they didn't even need Mario Circuit, they could have called this Mario Circuit and 
and nobody would have complained. Still a simple course layout wise, but a very effective one. And I'm curious to see how the next Mario Kart game's first course will compare to this one when it comes out in 30 years. Also, I very specifically love these newscaster toads you drive under near the start. They're not even commentating the race. They're jumping up and down. They should be fired. Amsterdam Damn. Drift. Another simple but enjoyable enough course. I do really appreciate the color palette here. Any part of the track that isn't on a road but instead in a field is very pleasant to go through. Taking this boost in the water to reach a boat overhead for an item is pretty cool too. This is also probably the only IRL tour track where the enemies don't stick out like a sore thumb as much. I'm as surprised as you probably are when I say that out of every Mario circuit in this game, Mario Kart Stadium kinda sorta spiritually included, the GBA one is my favorite. Because at first glance, there isn't much about this one. And even though I have it ranked much, much lower, if you have DS Mario Circuit above this one, I wouldn't really blame you. But I am, weirdly, uh, obsessed isn't the right word, but whatever the slightly playing it up for a fun YouTube video equivalent word for obsessed is, with this pit stop area right by the starting line. For some reason, I misremembered every circuit course in GBA having one of these, but uh, no, just this one which is a crime. More courses need pit stop areas like this, where you decide whether to gun it for the next lap or take a quick detour for an emergency item. And this only happened to me maybe a few times ever, but every once in a blue moon, this pit stop's boost pad is just barely enough for me to squeak just ahead of someone over the finish line. It happens rarely, but let me tell you, when it does, it's invigorating. More pit stops in Mario courses, please. This ranking segment slash pit stop PSA was brought to you by Mario Motors for when you want Mario to go much more Fario. <laughs> Another one of the few times I do feel compelled to compare the Mario Kart 8 version to its original game. And even though I still place this much, much higher, they arguably dropped the ball harder than Sunset Wilds in the aesthetic department. What the hell? happened to Cheeseland. The original GBA version was a course made entirely out of cheese in outer space on the moon! On the moon, you idiot! <coughs> in Wii U, not only are we no longer on the moon, we're in a fucking desert again! And even ignoring the moon part, it's much more obvious you're driving on cheese. Whereas here, were it not for the occasional hole in the ground, I'd swear I'm just driving on sand again. The theming was godlike, god tier, and we goddamn blew it! Who did it? Who signed off on this? <sighs> I just want to talk. All that said, still a decent course. And the cheese motif isn't completely gone. There are still some obvious parts. Although, I'll admit, it took me years to realize this rock formation in the background was supposed to be a pizza slice. And I gotta admit, when the stars align and you have enough mushrooms to be able to take both glider shortcuts back to back, that's that good shit. Still though, it is disappointing. The original course theme in HD would have been awesome if they had kept the original moon backdrop or at least, God forbid, literally anything else but a desert. I could see this one shooting all the way up to A tier on that alone. But for now, it's down in C for Jeez. GBA Boot Lake is probably my candidate for best short, simple, sweet track in the game. Like, really, if it went on for another 10 seconds, it'd be like 15 spots lower or something, but it doesn't overstay its welcome. You do a couple tricks, a couple of turns that can be surprisingly tricky sometimes, do a quick underwater section, bada bing, bada boo, you're done. Short, simple, sweet. I really don't have a thesis on all of these. I I'm doing my best here. Bangkok Rush. <laughs> You said rush. Anyway, this track is the worst in the game because the very first time I played it, this happened. Okay. Three, uh, li less than three seconds. Already got hit by an item. Good start. All right, six seconds. All right, keep it up, keep it up. Big bucks, big bucks, no whammies. All right, nine seconds. Just keep, all right, and we're gonna restart. And we're gonna restart. I certainly got banged by something, all right, and it wasn't by the preferred option. This DLC sucks. Thanks for coming to the stream. Again, it is overall kind of simple like the other IRL tour tracks. However, there's more monuments and architecture here that I personally really dig. I also like these marketplace areas I can drive over or in lap three bounce on top of. There's also this mushroom shortcut that I thought was surprisingly sneaky and it took me a while to realize it was a shortcut. While you're gliding over, 
and I had to look up what this was called. The Democracy Monument. I don't know why I find that name funny. I just, I, I saw it and it was like the funniest thing I ever read for 10 minutes. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, after you glide over the Democracy Monument, because who has time for democracy? I'm driving here. You can glide to the right over this fence post and mushroom over this grass area. I didn't think you could do this. I thought there was going to be like an invisible wall here or something. So that's cool. Although immediately after that, there's these crabs and this is the worst the already pretty out of place Mario enemies get. Here's the tier list. We got the moles and piranha plants in Amsterdam Drift, everything else, and the crabs in Bangkok Rush. And then also the Tokyo Birth Wamps are still dead last, I lied. Also, one more thing, and I don't know how to put this into words. I I'm just gonna throw it out there and hope it makes sense to one other person besides me, but why do I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to drive up these stairs? Like, like, why does this feel like stairs Nintendo would block off as part of the background, but a mod lets me go up them? I, I, don't, I, I don't know, I can't explain it. But it's awesome. Anyway, this track is the best in the game, because in that same stream, I was desperate to beat someone who had a racist username, and I was barely able to do it. Go! Go! Ah! I did it. Shoutouts to the Democracy Monument. That one was for you, King. Now, while I would have loved to create a branching timeline where I can conveniently fudged the numbers and accidentally moved the track named Bangkok one spot over into number 69, that would be very undemocratic of me. But I do know some people who would love to drift on a dragon. Now that made plenty of sense, I'll tell you when you're older. Dragon Driftway is kind of on the simpler side when you get down to it, but it has two major things going for it. One, most of the course is in anti-gravity, which is epic. Second, it does give off some Sonic Unleashed vibes, which is usually not a sentence I can say as a positive, but uh, we take it here. We are now a third-ish through this list, and we have arrived at the first course that was in my original top 10 list from like like 7 million years ago, and this track has fallen one, two, three, 64 spots. Even back when this game had a measly baby amount of 32 tracks, I, I, I don't know how it got this high. I'll be honest, I probably could have actually sat through and watched that old video, but no, I don't wanna. I can barely listen to myself talk now. You think I wanna listen to 2014 Orange Chris? By now, you've either played Mario Kart 8 or you at least know what it is. Die. I really like half of this course, but the other half of Twisted Mansion is complete whatever. Twisted Mansion had what it needed to be the best haunted themed track in the series. The actual mansion parts? Perfect. No complaints, no notes. Tricking over this moving carpet in the dining hall, we you peaked. But then we get to the underwater section. If it was not for the presence of some dead fish, you would have zero reason to believe we are still in the same course. The entrance to the water section is cool. The water is ignoring physics and the arcway looks like that one boss from Mario Galaxy. It's a really, really awesome detail. But the underwater section itself, we might as well be in a random sewer. There is no indication that we are even still in the same zip code as this mansion. Not even some submerged debris from some old haunted furniture or something. No, this is a different track altogether and it takes up 40 to 50% of of it before we glide out and are back in business. It's not like the underwater section is even bad to drive through per se, but even looking at the screenshots on the Twisted Mansion page of the Mario Wiki, you'd think, huh, someone accidentally put a screenshot from a different course on here. Even in the Luigi's Mansion track from DS, which spends even less time in the mansion, you could still tell the non-mansion segment is part of the same course. Whatever, I still really like the actual mansion part of Twisted Mansion, and they still could have had an underwater segment. Just more mansion stuff, but now submerged in water. I don't know, whatever, it doesn't have to make sense, it's haunted. Before I went back to skim through that old deleted video, for some reason I thought I put Toad Harbor in the top 10. Uh, turns out I didn't, and I misremembered. So uh, now you have that cool piece of information. Uh, anyway, unrelated, here's Toad Harbor. Something something Sonic Adventure 2 joke, although I, I don't really see it. I know that this is kinda based on San Francisco, and I did just get done comparing another course to a Sonic game, but you do remember City Escape, right? Sonic goes down 45 degree angle streets for like five minutes straight, so once he reaches the bottom, that truck might as well have chased him down the entirety of Mount Everest. Toad Harbor is decidedly not taller than Mount Everest, 
which obviously means it's not accurate at all to San Francisco. Anyway, once again, Pleasant Track is pleasant, and I like when I'm able to successfully drift and also perform tricks on the top of this marketplace area at the start. And nobody ever in the history of this game, not even the developers, have ever taken this side path near the end ever. So when they put buzz saws on the truck, this will be a good place to hide. It's time for redemption for the Riverside Park Waterfall in Shy Guy Falls. And I cannot stress this enough. Seriously, I'm serious. Whatever tab you got open right now, I need you to close it. Come back to this video. Actually fully pay attention to me, okay? You can go up the waterfall. I know, I know, I know. But please, I need everybody to put their pants back on. Because after that, you can go down the waterfall. Oh my god. God! Okay, you can go back to that other tab now. The rest of the track's pretty whatever. The Shy Guys kinda sing slash make sound effects along to the music, which is pretty cute. But I swear, in 30 seconds, when I loop back around to that waterfall again, I will become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. This is the first and so far only course to be themed after Rosalina, and all references to her are at the starting line and like a few observatory domes midway through the track. And that's it. And why does Rosalina have an ice world? Who played Mario Galaxy looked at her and said, ah, oh, yeah, she looks like the Ice World type. Did she want an Ice World? That sounds pretty ill-advised to me. She has a thousand space kits. I don't think her space health insurance covers a thousand cases of space hypothermia. Theming a rainbow road around her in a way other than just some star bits floating around would have been far more fitting. Theming aside, it's otherwise not a bad course, and I'm sure, as you can tell by the much higher placement, I find it much more appealing than Ice Ice Outpost. And I promise... I promise, it is not just because of my chronic simping. Even if the observatory and any other references were completely removed, even if it was called some random guy's ice world, it still looks far more appealing and there's like a little bit of snow. I also like how you need enough speed to make this one jump, otherwise you have to take the water path below. And taking these speed boosts on the side path can be a little tricky, especially if multiple people are trying to go down that path at once. So yeah, still a good course, but Rosalina, I'm sorry. I can no longer call myself your strongest soldier. I'm so sorry, my wife. Please don't tell my wife. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious sh We are now at the B tiers. We still have about two thirds left to go and we're already at the tracks I can definitively say I like and will willingly pick. However, like the start of C tier, we do kind of have to get through a couple of tour courses that technically only barely made it here. One of which is Sydney Sprint, which you already know is hard carried by that music. This is one of the best songs in not just this game, but Mario Kart as a whole. I don't think many are gonna try to contend with me on that one. This song needs to be in the next Smash Bros, for sure. Gliding into the Sydney Opera House and tricking on these ramps on the highway is pretty neat, I guess, but did you guys listen to the fucking song though? Tour New York Minute, which I promise is not this high just because I live in New York. This track is based in Manhattan, not the borough I'm from. And also, I don't not like living here, but you think I'm gonna brag about living in NY via a Mario Kart ranking? Oh boy, I love paying $3 and my soul to the MTA every day. I love breathing in trash. Ah, oh, if only this course captured those magical elements, but no. What do we have instead? Donkey Kong, the best musical? Yeah, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda didn't make that one. Nice f***ing try, Nintendo. Why didn't you capture our actual important landmarks? Like, uh, the Times Square Toys R Us that shut down in 2015. I know it's no democracy money, but still. Uh, anyway, I accidentally spent the entire segment roasting my home state for no reason. Uh, track's fine, vibrant, looks cool. Uh, unlike in real life, your odds of getting mugged on this track are extremely minimal, so that's cool. But wait, we're not out of New York just yet. Now we gotta get on the Long Island Expressway, or as it's known by its more popular name, N64 Toad's Turnpike. Tomato, tomato. This course is chaotic. Like, maybe not chaotic like Baby Park, which suspiciously hasn't shown up yet. But like, I've had races where the cars mean absolutely nothing to me, and then I've had races where the invisible masses of oxygen that drive these cars become high priority targets on my rogues gallery more than the actual racers. I do kind of wish they didn't add these anti-gravity sections. Like they're optional, you don't have to use them, but no, you get back down here and play in traffic like the rest of us. And why would I use them? If I did, I'd miss my opportunity to take this glider ramp over the bridge. I mean, it only ever lines up for me like once a year, but when it does, that's epic. Sherbet Land was one of my favorite courses back in Double Dash, and I'm pretty sure it was just because of the snowy aesthetic and whimsical music. Because I'm sure if I played that version now, Double Dash physics plus ice physics would probably make me want to vom. Whether I'm right or wrong about that, the ice physics aren't that big a deal here. I can dodge the adorable ice skating shy guys just fine and continue taking in the pleasant wintry vibes. I think taking place at night with fireworks in the sky really amps up the aesthetics over the 
the original version, but I think I like the music from the original more. In the original, the whistle kind of overlaid on top of the rest of the instrumentation, and in Mario Kart 8, it kind of takes over the whole song. Best way I can think to describe it. I still like the 8 version perfectly fine, and in fact, it was number 6 on the original top 10. It's just the OG Sherbet Land is randomly crazy high up on my list of Mario Kart songs that trigger my nostalgia boner. Speaking of boners, you can barely hit this glider ramp shroomless on 200cc. You know, when you stare at a tear maker image that you've made for two to three weeks on end while scripting a video, and you see all those bright colors just kind of meshing together into into globs of crap, it just you just you start you start hallucinating, you start going crazy, you start seeing things like, damn, no way, he put Mushroom Gorge all the way down at number 60. What the f***? But it's all good, guys. Don't worry. I recounted it like five times. I double-checked with my lawyers, uh, but then my lawyers confirmed that, yes, it is actually at number 60. And then they sued me! So I think it mostly boils down to the Shroom Ridge argument again. I think the appeal comes from how the track plays out in the original game engine, and that it didn't quite make the leap over to MK8 as gracefully. That said, I'm sure you can all tell by the placement, I thought this one stuck the landing more. I obviously still like bouncing and tricking off the mushrooms, I'm not a Neanderthal. But also, the mushrooms looked like they were pulsating in the other games, and none of them are throbbing here. And as a fan of throbbing, this is upsetting. Not sure about this song being in Smash either, TBH. I wasn't a big fan of Piranha Plant Slide back on Mario Kart 7, probably because this is essentially a big sewer, which is far from the most exciting theme for a Mario Kart course. Also, it's called Piranha Plant Slide, but there are a whopping two piranha plants. I feel like we misread the assignment, but the new anti-gravity part and more dynamic glider section gives this some much needed points overall. Plus, I really like getting the coins behind the first piranha plant. I don't even think this shortcut is actually that much faster, if at all, I just think it's neat. Okay, another 3DS track I used to not be a big fan of, strangely enough, and I don't have an answer for this one. It's just how I remember it, I'm sorry. And it was DK Jungle. And yeah, no one's gonna get on my case for initially saying hard no to a sewer, but saying no to Donkey Kong? But I've come around. I've definitely at least never said no to that jazzy DK theme remix though, but I've come to appreciate everything else from the Tiki Towers to the Golden Banana Temple, and even the Tiki Drum Guys from DK Country Returns. I don't hate these guys as much as everyone else. I, I definitely prefer the Kremlings and the Ice Vikings from Tropical Freeze, but these guys are respectable. But there's also only a few. I think we could have gotten away with two or three more elsewhere in the track, but I understand why, because there's also some frogs. I don't think I've ever been hit by them. I almost always hit the glider ramp to skip over them. Uh, like really, are they even hazards? I genuinely don't know. But there's a first day for everything and I'm not looking forward to it. You wanna talk about being hard carried by the winter snow aesthetic? That's like 80% of what Merry Mountain's got going on. I remember the first time I played it, I got to lap two and was like, oh, sh is lap two already? Huh. Okay. I feel like Merry Mountain builds up to something that ends up not happening. After you turn onto the downward hill leading back to the finish line and you're like, oh boy, here we go, it's about to get real, there's like nothing. And I feel like there should be non-nothing? This hill is so large and empty and all they did was throw a couple anti-grav boost thingies because it was all they had and the only other remotely notable part being a very brief glider ramp that doesn't even kick in until after lap one. Like why'd they do that? Oh man it's just so exciting over here better save this four second gliding section for later don't want to blow our loads too quickly. Now all that said I know that all sounded like this should be below Sherbert Land but the difference is Sherbert Land has snow, Merry Mountain has snow, and Christmas. And that's the best I got. I hope N64 Yoshi Valley comes along real soon so I have something else to talk about. Oh, thank God, I'm so glad you're here. And also, how f***ing dare you? The audacity, the gall, the chutzpah of you to show your face around here. The first time. And now you think just because I placed you at number 9 on the original top 10 for some ungodly reason, and just because you finally sobered up and remembered how to display cart placings correctly, you think you deserve the Nobel Peace Prize or something? And don't even get me started on the alternate paths, my guy. Even when everyone's not playing like a sweaty tryhard, there is no reason to take any path besides the one you see me taking on screen now. Uh, sure, you get an extra item and all that, but you lose so much time. Unless maybe you're dead last and magically get a bullet bill and you're content with finishing in 11th instead of 12th, there's no point. I only took the other paths for the footage, and this is, no joke, the first time I've seen what these other paths look like for the first time since the week the game came out in 2014. I 
completely forgot there was a barrel cannon. Also, check out this mushroom ramp at the end before the finish line. This is the most useless ramp in the entire game. Either you use the mushroom to take the ramp and then still have to make the turn, or you do what everyone in the history of the planet ever does and boost across the grass on the left and skip the turn. And also, this egg. This whole thing is stupid and dumb and it sucks. I like it. And we've arrived at the second best traffic course in the game with Tor Berlin Byways. And also the only IRL tour track that has active traffic now that I think about it, which is really weird. Cars exist IRL, not thwomps, and especially not crabs. I mean, yeah, it'd be obnoxious if every IRL tour track had traffic, but only one? And not the Manhattan one? It's the year 20XX. A mushroom fungus outbreak has claimed the lives of everyone on Earth. The streets are devoid of all human life. Except in Germany, they're chilling over there. So much chilling, they had time to make this sick beat. Like, Sydney's sprint probably still takes it, but I flip a coin most days. But we gotta talk about my favorite part of this track. I keep talking about how most Mario enemies are out of place. This is out of place in the best possible way. The Womps at the Berlin Wall, which, uh, I, I don't know how ethical the phrase my favorite piece of revisionist history is in most contexts, but this is it. Ah, uh, I remember the fall of the Berlin Wall like it was just yesterday. I remember it clearly. Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And then the German border troops employed by King Koopa said, wah, wah, wah. I'm glad Mario Kart Tour finally answered the age-old debate of who'd win a death battle between Bowser's army and the Soviet Union. Also, you can trick off the Womps. So you know Soviet Union 2's never coming out, baby. So not gonna lie, uh, I really wanted to give all the tour courses their due diligence and not just immediately write all of them off like some people do. And uh, admittedly, I might've gotten a little bit lost in the sauce and I think Los Angeles laps might've snuck up a little bit higher than I wanted it to. But again, I've already rewrote this list like 412 times, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and admit defeat on this one. But I by no means think it's bad. I do really like this track. At the very least, I can say I have it one spot above Berlin, because you can barely take the glider ramp in the oil field without a mushroom, even below 200cc if you angle it right, which feels really good to hit. And we get two more items during the glide? Yes, please. If I could get bonus items for popping a wheelie off the goddamn Berlin wall, that should be in like A tier easy. Although yeah, let's talk about that oil field for a second. Like many of you, I too was confused. This is an LA landmark? For real? And yeah, I looked it up. The Inglewood oil field. Yes, indeed. But uh, I don't know, maybe we could have skipped this one? Kind of a bit of whiplash after coming off of sunny beaches and gliding over baseball stadiums. Like, maybe we don't need to hit every landmark, you know? I mean, again, the glider ramp and a double item combo, I'll take it, but still. If they really wanted to be accurate and get the real culturally significant landmarks in there, they should have replaced the oil field with a poorly criminally unregulated foam pit that barely has any foam in it. And when you drive over it, your car explodes. That would be more dangerous than Rainbow Road. I feel like I'm mostly resorting to terrible jokes to carry us through a lot of these segments. Except the Mario Motors one. That one, that one was a banger. I'd put that on my fridge. Even in a normal sized Mario Kart ranking, I'd be struggling a little bit. Like, I, I, you want me to find 95 different ways to say, here's why this course is better than 3DS Toad Circuit? I don't have a Babbel subscription. But all jokes aside for a second, I really wanted to get to the bottom of this question. Do I actually like Calamari Desert or not? Quick backstory, back in college, before Mario Kart 8 came out, me and a couple of my closest friends played Mario Kart 7 online often, and for some reason, there was a running joke where I absolutely despised Calamari Desert and one other course that we'll talk about later. Because of this, naturally, they picked these two courses to race on over and over every chance they got. And I only remember this because to this day, one of them brings it up every other time we hang out. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast this morning, and she quotes random crap I've said in YouTube videos from a decade ago. Anyway, Brittany, I don't hate Calamari Desert because you keep picking it over and over and over for some dead bit you weirdly remember that I don't. I hate it because it's a desert. But then, I like it because of a train. This train makes or breaks people's desire to play this course. The people who like this course frequently avoid the train. The people who hate this course frequently get held up by the train. 
and there is no in-between. Life in this desert begins and ends with the train. And yeah, if it was the same as N64 and 3DS, it'd probably be back down in at least the lower half of C tier, but the first time I played this version of the course, getting halfway through lap two, getting to that ramp that suddenly shows up out of nowhere, and getting that feeling of, oh, sh we're really doing this. It's incredible. Being able to drive on the train tracks is the glow up of the century. And this has the added benefit of meaning you only really usually have to worry about getting 100% held up by the train on lap one. Since after that, you usually have options of avoiding it that don't involve just coming to a halt. But it still poses a reasonable enough threat. The only thing that would make this course even better is if we were on a moon made of cheese. Then Brittany can vote for it as many times as she damn well pleases. As is, she may vote for it Sometimes. Sometimes. And coming up, we have another course from my original top 10. Originally at number 10, we have Water Park. It doesn't even belong to anybody, it's just a water park. It was obviously between an ice world and a water park. Rosalina got a bad deal, I'm just saying. Anyway, not much to say on this one. I feel like any kind of amusement park theme track is just automatically a win. Bonus points, that's a water park. Also on 200cc, you go so fast in the gliding section, you can clip through the ferris wheel, and I do it every single time. I can't get enough of it. And like the 10 year old within me, my patience with the length of this list is at an end. But that's okay, because we're almost done. But first, I'm just dying to talk about Rock Rock Mountain. The team who was in charge of naming this track were dying to talk about it too. They had multiple conference meetings talking about it. One of them famously said, uh, I don't know, it has a rock. Like, at least two of them. Yeah, if we were going on theme alone, F tier, easily. But man, when we really get down to it, those gliding sections are pretty cool. And oh, the one after the cave, if the star is a line and you have at least a triple mushroom, or even better, a star, you can glide all the way over onto the grass, use them, cut through so much of the track, it feels cathartic. So we got an A tier layout and an F tier theme. Ah, uh, that's what the track name is about. One rock's covered in solid gold, and the other rock's covered in elephant dung. Finally, the thwomps have left Tokyo and returned to their natural habitat and delivered a really solid course. But there's two standout parts that elevate it alone. First, if you have two items at the start of a new lap, and the first happens to be a mushroom, if you time it just right, you can use your mushroom just before hitting the item box and nail the ramp shortcut while still getting a second item. And that shit's epic. Second, the shortcut ramp before the final gliding section. It can be a bit tricky to line up correctly, especially in close quarters with other racers, but I love it when I nail it every time. I never not go for this jump. I try to take it even when I know for a fact it's not a good idea, because I'm not a baby. 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 Kart racing has changed. It's no longer about placements, track design, or skill. It's an endless series of items thrown by gamers and CPUs. Kart racing and its throwing of controllers has become a randomized machine. Kart racing has changed. Players who use items run into item boxes, get more items to use, their fingers mashing on the left trigger at all times. Green shell control, red shell control, shells. There's a lot of shells. Kart racing has changed. The age of skill has become the age of items, all in the name of averting players who have a thousand hours logged into the game from crossing the finish line first. And he who controls this tiny oval controls history. And also there's items. Did I mention that? There's a lot of items. There's nothing you can do about it. No play in the history of this game has ever finished a race on Baby Park and not been hit by at least one item one time. You can pretend to have skill in every other Mario Kart course, but on Baby Park, there are no hopes or dreams. Only true neutral. And the true neutral is where we can thrive. Normally, humanity is content to divide things onto a strictly binary scale. Left and right, black and white, dubs and subs, doms and subs, dubby doms and subby subs, but most are content to exist on the ends of these binary scales, never acknowledging there are in-betweens. There is a middle where we can all meet, where we can all be equal, where race, gender, sexuality, religion can both not matter and coexist at the same time. We all continue to fight and hurt each other over such trivial matters when we should all come together as one and just drive in a fucking circle for a minute and a half. Join me, my friends. Let's end these pointless battles and put the past to bed and make way for a better future. 
a future where we can all meet in the middle of this Mario Kart ranking video because that's where I put Baby Park. It's in the middle. It's in the middle of the list. True neutral. Except not really because this game has 96 courses. So Baby Park technically can't be in the middle because it's an even number. So anyhow, uh, Baby Park is actually like top half of D tier somewhere on most days, but uh, you just so happen to catch me on a day I woke up on the violent side of the bed. Anyway, here's Rainbow Road. Wait, what the f Excuse me? A Rainbow Road is only halfway up the list? I, I, I know we're going off of 96 trillion courses here, but halfway? That's crazy. This was number three on my original top 10. As far as I know, the popular consensus appears to be that this is one of the weakest Rainbow Roads of the series, at least as far as original versions go. Some say absolute bottom. I don't know if I'd go that far. I get some people are turned off that they de-emphasize the rainbow part of Rainbow Road, and seeing an audience of spectators on a Rainbow Road is definitely the biggest OSHA violation Mario Kart's ever committed, but I still think this is a fun, enjoyable course, and I appreciate they went for something different with this one but i think the biggest knock against it is that this is the easiest rainbow road we got in a while in most other rainbow roads i feel like i could get knocked off at any time here i really only sometimes get knocked off oddly enough at the starting turns before the first glide ramp and also sometimes when i do this mushroomless shortcut which is a pretty cool shortcut that everybody figured out day one but still pretty cool still a solid rainbow road still a course i feel has the vibes of a celebratory final level but yeah definitely the weakest out of mario kart 8's five rainbow road tracks five jesus yoshi circuit it's shaped like a yoshi it really truly is just that painfully easy sometimes. Sky High Sunday is mostly coasting off of its theme and aesthetics as it doesn't get too overly crazy except for this part about a third into it with all the trick ramps. You can get a little cute here and, and hey, I hear you, I see you. I too lay awake at night wondering why these staircase handlebars have no collision. They, they give you a boost. But why? This is like the only time in the whole game that an object other than the spin booster bumper thingies gives you anti-grav boost. And it's in the form of something you would actively avoid if it was on any other track. Every time I pause the footage here, it just doesn't look right. But it's a chocolate slash candy course that actually kind of looks like chocolate slash candy. But it's far from the best of its kind. But we'll talk about that one in a little bit, because we're almost done. I love the part in Wario Stadium where you have to hit all these boost pads correctly or else die in the mud pile like the miserable piece of human garbage you are. I like trying to get a double item box and hit all three boosts at the end, which I fail a lot, but don't tell anybody, especially Wario. If he finds out, he's going to throw me in the mud pile like the miserable piece of human garbage I am. Yeah, I had nothing to say about this one, I guess. It's really, uh, this was a struggle. <laughs> ah, damn it. Okay, all right. This one might have also snuck up a bit higher than I wanted, but that's okay. At least the title's accurate on this one. It's called Vancouver Velocity because I need the extra velocity to get to A tier as fast as I can so this can start to feel like a normal sized Mario Kart ranking again, please. And either way, it has snow and is pleasant. If I've said either one of those words once, I've said them a thousand times. Or maybe like six. I don't know. I know I said I like it when all three laps on these tour tracks are different, but I kind of wish we went through the ice rink on all three laps instead of two. Because it's the Shy Guys from Sherbet Land, and they should be on every track. Even if it doesn't have snow or ice. I don't know. Give them roller skates instead and have them cause delays at the airport that are so bad it's considered an international crisis. We're back at it again at Rainbow Road, and guys, listen. I, I don't really like the original version of N64 Rainbow Road. Might even be my least favorite. Now, yes, it's nostalgic. The music's great. It has a really awesome shortcut that can only be performed by like nine people in the whole entire universe. But I've been staring into this black void for six minutes and I need my sleep paralysis demons to take the wheel for me by the time we get to the final lap. But this version is a glow up in every way. It's obviously still not getting major points on track layout itself. And they probably could have gotten away with adding one or two more parts like this cool chain chomp part you could do tricks on. But otherwise, you already know, we're mostly coasting on looks and music. This course looks beautiful, music's incredible, it's one lap so I can actually play this course and still get to bed at a reasonable hour, and if there was ever one inaccessible part of a Mario Kart course I would love to drive around, it's the town below this rainbow road. And in fact, there's actually videos of people modding it so you can drive around down there. 
This shit's my jam. If ASMR and fanfiction didn't exist, out of bounds videos would be what I use to help fall asleep instead. Speaking of fanfiction, Daisy Circuit is this high solely because of the Luigi and Daisy statue and absolutely nothing else. I don't even actively ship these two in particular, but other people do it for me and I thank them for it. Any reference to both Luigi and Daisy together, be it in general or in any kind of romantic context, is acknowledged so infrequently in the Mario games, there will be like maybe one new explicit nugget, maybe once a console generation. So even I gotta acknowledge the W's in this department when we get them. I really do like the sunset and ocean view and all those vibes we got going on, but rest of the track is pretty basic even by basic track standards. It would otherwise be down in probably C, but again, the statue. The hopeless romantic in me is very easily won over. It's just fan fiction for now, but soon, who knows? Who knows what kind of f***ed up things I'll do. Maybe, maybe I'll put Daisy Circuit in S tier. Maybe, maybe I'll put Rosalina's Ice World in triple S tier. And I'll pretend it has a statue. <laughs> <laughs> There's two music-themed racetracks in this game. One of them I like better in terms of aesthetics, while the other is more fun to actually race on. 2014 Chris would probably have the two swap places, but 20 whatever godforsaken year it is right now Chris has to take everything into account as best he possibly can, so Electrodrum loses to Music Park. But for real, theming alone? Definitely gotta be in the top 10 somewhere. Like, do I really honestly need, need to say anything specific? You have eye holes. Use them. In fact, before I wrote this, I would have guessed I put Electrodrome in my original top 10. But, uh, no, I double checked and Twisted Mansion was still number 4. What the frick? So, something I neglected to mention up to this point is that while I have praised water sections elsewhere in this video and still have a few more coming up, I also don't prefer them. Like, hey, when it's a glow up, it's a glow up. But let's just say when water is optional, I usually avoid it. But out of the courses in this game that are predominantly submerged, in contention for the top spot is Dolphin Shoals. I love this course. Following the dolphin through these hoops is awesome. This cave pipe section is unlike anything in any other track in this game, and it's awesome. You can go on top of this eel, which is awesome. You can trick on top of the eel, which is awesome. Like. Damn, Chris, what are we still doing in B tier? Isn't this course in A tier? A for awesome? Unfortunately, there is one thing holding the course back from barely making it into A. The music. Uh, no, not the song itself. The song itself is also awesome. It might be in my top 10 favorite songs in the entire game. The problem is the saxophone version of the song only plays during the last third of the lap. The first two thirds are replaced with underwater variants, which are still nice, but where's the sax, bro? The saxophone does stay for the entirety of the final lap, but it's sped up like every other song gets on the final laps, which is fine, but I would have preferred the sax at regular speed for the first two laps. I still appreciate the dynamicness of the song. I love it when games in general do stuff like that, but when my favorite part is amongst my favorite songs in the whole game, and I could only hear it for like 20 seconds at a time, yeah, it, it just kind of sucks. Unlike the rest of the course, which is awesome. But if this course comes back in a future Mario Kart, it better have the sax the whole time. I mean it. If it lacks the sax, your backs will get the axe. I am speed. And now we're at the A tier. Courses I will choose 90 to 95% of the time. Dolphin Shoals was an A tier in spirit, but while this next course doesn't have sax, it does have cowbell, baby. I mean, not in the song, but the, the cows have bells. I, once again, feel the obligation to tell you I'm not memeing. I promise the only placement I deliberately botched as a gag was Baby Park. But I really do like this course. The song here is like simultaneously a post, but also like a really banging post, dude. And these cows care not for your welfare. They'll play nice on lap one until they remember they literally own the joint and start heading onto the track on lap two and it's the most unceremonious thing ever. It's not like they have a grand entrance, they just casually stroll over, taking their sweet ass time, and will not react to you whatsoever even if you crash into them. You are nothing to these corporeal beings. And I don't know if it's because I'm losing brain cells roughly 12,000 words into this script, but it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a Mario game. I don't have much to add about the rest of the track, but it's a short and sweet romp that I really appreciate. Okay, cards on the table. 
I had to rewrite this segment on Tor Athens Dash twice because I came off as an idiot who thought Athens wasn't a real place. And I am an idiot, but not for that. Athens Dash is, for lack of a better word on my part, the more fantastical of the city tracks. Still a city, still has more modern buildings, still a real place. But I think I can pretend that Mario characters don't stick out too badly here compared to the other real world city tracks, if only because of the dominance and popularity of Greek mythology and media based around Greek mythology, which helps this one really stand out from the other IRL tour tracks. And I do love me some Greek mythology, like a Mario Kart course based on the River Styx or the more mythical godly interpretations of Mount Olympus would f hard. Like Zeus. I did hear the tour version of this course had a cannon that was replaced with a regular glide ramp, so, you know, low-key boo to that. And the tour version also apparently had Thwomps present here. Uh, this would have been the one course I wouldn't have inherently minded seeing Thwomps in, and this was the one they chose to take him out of. But whatever, I heard about that at the last minute, so I just wanted to bring that up for funsies. This is a cool track based on a cool place that is real. Scout's Honor. Uh-oh, Chris put a tour track way higher than he intended for the third time in a row. No. No, I didn't. Not, Not this, this time. time. I know why I put Madrid Drive as high as I did. More than Sydney Sprint. More than Berlin Byways. Madrid Drive's music is exactly my jam. Backstory time, I vividly remember the first two pieces of mainstream music I ever listened to. And when I tell you what they are, for the love of God, do not ask me what I was doing listening to these two songs at the age of five or six. I could not on my life possibly tell you why. But the first two non-video game songs I ever heard was Baby One More Time by Britney Spears, and the more relevant one to this discussion, by Lamos by Enrique Iglesias. Again, I don't know. Gun to my head, I, I cannot answer on behalf of six-year-old Chris. I will not be able to give you an answer. I don't know what he was doing, but regardless, ever since that day, I've been a complete and total s yeah. for Spanish instrumentation and percussion. It's like a cheat code to my ears. I, I can't help myself. If there's Spanish instrumentation somewhere in that <laughs> Instant 10 out of 10. If a girl comes up to me and whips out some castanets, I instantly get pregnant. Espanol? More like Espanol! That's it. That's why the course is this high. I meant it when I said I'm factoring in everything with these rankings. Because the majority of the rest of the course is just fine. Probably would otherwise be bottom of B, top of C somewhere. Though, driving through a stadium is infinitely cooler than flying over a stadium. I kind of wish this was also in all three laps with roller skating shy guys. Quick reminder that every Wave 6 booster DLC course is subject to change placements even more drastically than every other track. Like I can definitely see this one falling back into B a little bit after this video comes out and I've had more time to sit on it. But for the time being, Piranha Plant Cove surprisingly won me over. And I know I just got done saying I prefer mostly being on land than mostly in water, but ironically, I think this track might have hit different if it was entirely underwater. But I also still think the brief parts where we were back up on land are as tranquil. Like, I can't put it into words. I think the closest equivalent I can think of is... Uh, well, let's talk Zelda Breath Slash Tears again. Just go to Lurland Village at night and hopefully you feel what I feel. Something about a beach, or beach-like setting at nighttime, you know? I know Link can't actually go in the water without drowning and dying because he's a baby, but still. Uh, do I want this course to be mostly water or mostly land? I don't know! This beats Dolphin Shoals because of the sex thing, by the way. You already knew that. We Wario's Gold Mine is funny because I'm funnily enough more into the part of the track outside of the gold mine than the actual inside of the mine itself. Like, if there's another candidate for track I want to be able to drive out of bounds of next to N64 Rainbow Road, it's this one. I, I don't know how he'd actually do it with the sheer verticality of this canyon, and there's no out of bounds mod videos I could find but a man can dream. Either way, the inside of the gold mine is still no doubt fun to race on as well. I do kinda wish the mine carts still acted as hazards instead of now being speed boosters, but it hardly takes away from the track as a whole. And it at least somehow makes more sense than a staircase railing. Singapore Speedway is the best IRL tour track in this game and it's hardly a contest. Even people who dislike every other tour track in this game with the fiery passion of a thousand suns are still like, 
Oh, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, uh, cool. After I was starting to wrap up writing this list, I unwinded from this massive Mario Kart 8 ranking by watching other Mario Kart 8 rankings. What can I say? I know how to have a good time. And out of every ranking that I watched, I'm pretty sure almost all of them had Singapore Speedway at the top and Tokyo Blur at the bottom. And, well, hey, uh, glad to conform to inherent societal norms on this one. Not only is Singapore Speedway the best IRL tour course, I think it's just a really solid Mario Kart course overall, even if we remove it from any tour discussions. This place is so colorful and vibrant, the only other close competition is the Times Square portion of New York Minute, but that's just one part of the course. You take a screenshot of any part of Singapore Speedway, and you've struck gold without trying. It feels like the city itself is having a party during this race. Every gliding section is lovely, the Chinatown area is lovely, I'm already a sucker for when swimming areas overlook vast areas with a killer view, whether it's in video games or or real life, so you know I love this part on this rooftop with the floaty Goombas. And there's this conveyor belt area, which, mind you, this is just my brain doing a bunch of unnecessary mental hoops and gymnastics to make this comparison, but it's the closest thing we're getting to Toad's Factory for a while. Citizens of Singapore, congratulations. You all win the prestigious Best Country from the Worst Mobile Game Award. However, uh, although I said I still like the gliding segments, you do have about three weeks to make it so we drive through the float at Marina Bay instead of over it, or I will have to take the award back. Oops, I nearly forgot. Real life kind of sucks dick, actually, but Bowser's pretty cool. He did tear down the Berlin Wall, after all. So let's go hit up his MTV crib over here. And, uh, not gonna lie, excluding the flat SNES and GBA Bowser's castles, uh, Mario Kart 8's Bowser Castle might be second from the bottom compared to other Bowser's Castles, only beating 7s for me. But hey, it says a lot that a Bowser's Castle low on one list is still good enough to be in the A-tier top third of another list. My only minor gripe is that in the heat of the moment, it's sometimes a little difficult for me to see the swinging spike ball past the triple fiery bars in front of it. And by the time I dodge the fire, I have next to no time to dodge once I can clearly see the spike ball. It can get a little dicey here, but what I can call potentially slightly unfair, Bowser can call waking up on a Monday morning, so he gets a pass. Everything else, I mean, you already know what we got going on here. You got the great Bowser music, you got the great Bowser statue section, that still doesn't beat Wii's, but it's still good. You're entering the front door, you haven't even had time to take off your shoes yet, and the motherfucker's already firing lasers at you. Even the aesthetics of the starting line are metal as f Like, you don't need me to tell you this track's good. You know it is. Let's move on, because we're almost done. If I keep saying it, it'll be true eventually. And I mean it. It will be true eventually. Because we are now at number 32. Which means, after all this time, this is now finally a regular-sized Mario Kart ranking video. Yes! DS, Wii, 7, 8. All of these had 32 tracks. But then 8 got a little cute, a little frisky. And then 8 asked if they could, and not if they should. But we've returned to what we've celebrated as the holy number since 2005. And hey, let's pretend for a minute that Mario Kart 8 came out on the Wii U, and that was it. No DLC, no deluxe, no booster course pass, no tour even. Mario Kart 8 came out on the Wii U and that was it. If in this reality, Mario Kart 9 came out on the Nintendo Switch family of systems and was an original, regular sized Mario Kart game with 32 tracks and these next 32 were the tracks for it, I would be perfectly happy. I would have no complaints. I mean, the retro to new track ratio would be a little bit kerfuffled, but I otherwise would not care. Some people would care though, because this would mean that Neo Bowser City barely made it. Anyone who has this course down in D tier, continue to speak your truth. The layout is not winning awards. This Koopa Clown Car Wind is the only shortcut and it's not even good. The music for this dystopian future city that Bowser conquered is a remix of the theme of circuit courses in Mario Kart 7. Like, Bowser took over the world, could have any theme he wants, and said, yeah, the basic circuit theme of my eternal rival was fine, but I need you guys to know what I love. What I love more than snow, more than waterfalls, more than saxophones or Spanish guitars. Oh, I felt the baby kicking. I don't think it liked that last thing that I said. More than those three other things, 
I love rain. I am all about the rain. Bowser took over and he was slacking on the theme song because he spent his time and energy building a weather machine to give us 24-7 rain so that we all had an excuse to stay in and listen to lo-fi beats to study slash hail Bowser 2. More courses need rain. We so rarely get rainy courses in the entire series. Like, the only other ones I know off the top of my head are Luigi Circuit on GBA, uh, the inside of the storm clouds on Cloudtop Cruise a little bit, and then this one and that's it. It's an outrage! Remember when we were talking about Donut Plains 300 years ago and I said it looked like it rained before we started racing? Well, it's raining during the race now. Donut Plains wishes. Maybe if the rain in the plane stayed mainly in the in the plane, it would be all the way up here instead. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be up here instead. Look, the remaining 31 courses are good. I promise. Everybody likes them. Nobody will argue with me. Nobody. I'll at least talk to Bowser about the music. He'll get back to me later. It's time for me to play devil's advocate for Koopa Cape. Like, I, I haven't been doing that for other courses for at least a quarter of this list. On the one hand, I think that removing the electrical wheels from the tube section isn't a super duper bad thing. Like, we're in a game with 12 players and everyone behind me has 50 red shells at all times. Dodging those wheels on top of an obnoxious amount of players and items it might have been a bit much. But on the other hand, I don't like that there's virtually no obstacles down here at all. Even Seven and Tor at least had cheap cheeps as replacement obstacles. Also, on the one hand, it inherently makes sense to make this an underwater section, but on the other hand, I liked the idea of being able to have an underwater section that we still regularly drive through. I still like the tube section and think it's beautiful. I don't not like it, but instead of too much challenge in the tube, we instead have no challenge in the tube. And it's another one of those instances where it's hard for me not to take the past into account. Other than that, still Koopa Cape. The river is legendary and it ends with going down a waterfall, baby! See, I told you you were gonna like these courses. Shut up. Peach Gardens from DS was a course that I've always liked but never went absolutely insane over. And much like Koopa Cape, this version was simplified a little bit, but it's not nearly as egregious. However, that same feeling I got when the game suddenly and unexpectedly directed me onto the train track in Calamari Desert came back again here in full force. Yeah, have you guys guessed by now I never look at the minimap? Although even then, I should have known something was up. I, I guess I just drove right past these arrows and said, yep, nothing to see there, you got it boss. But lo and behold, we get to lap three and we're now going through the course in reverse and gliding over this huge part of the track we drove through previously. It's so cool. I found out nearly every course in Tor has a reverse version, but in Mario Kart 8 specifically, this and Paris are the only two courses to do something like this. And yeah, it would be obnoxious if every course forcefully did something like this for every final lap but driving through courses backwards is awesome, okay? I don't make the rules. Don't act like you didn't boot up time trial mode as a kid just to see how many tracks you can make it through backwards. I really think they should consider adding reverse courses in the next Mario Kart that isn't Tor. But yeah, it probably wouldn't work as gracefully on some courses. Courses with huge gaps would also need some creative liberties, aka a buttload of ramps. But come on, mirror mode? Boring. Reverse mode? Sign me up. Thank you, Peach Gardens. I'm gonna go get reverse mode passed in the Senate. I'm sure they're not doing anything better right now. Wario has made three separate attempts at a stadium-themed track, while Luigi nailed it on the first shot. A character's association with a track's theme can sometimes be a bit tenuous, but this one's perfect. I can't think of two things that go together better than Waluigi and Mud Pits and you can interpret that sentence however your heart desires. This is just a fun course. Everything is fun. The tricks, dodging the fire, tricking off the half pipes around the giant fake piranha plants, and I adore these new anti-gravity ramps you can land on if you hit the half pipes just right. I think even if you believe glider and anti-gravity segments can feel needlessly shoehorned into retro tracks sometimes, I think you gotta give it up for them this time. The only thing this course is missing, and the only thing that the second and only other Waluigi Stadium from RKGP2 has over this, is robotic dinosaurs. Nintendo, next time you bring this course back, just add the robot dinosaurs. You did this to yourself. You could have named that arcade course anything you wanted. You named it Waluigi Stadium as well, so I want the dinosaurs. If I asked Waluigi, he would agree, so just do it. Thank you. Number seven from the original top 10, and probably at least 50% due to aesthetics, Sweet Sweet Canyon. It's probably still 50% looks, but no one's gonna blame me. Way more than Sky High Sunday, way, way more than Shaco Mountain. I am here to absolutely consume, devour, <laughs> ingest, guzzle, swallow synonyms this entire course. The donut tunnel, the wafer windmills, 
the entire audience? Like, damn, hey girl, you playing Mario Kart? Cause you got a sweet, sweet canyon. She. That's a freebie if anyone wants to get punched in the groin. I will admit I could take or leave the underwater segment. It only lasts a couple seconds and I know it's supposed to be orange soda, but I feel like the orangeness could have been way more pronounced. If anyone thought this was supposed to be regular water, I couldn't blame them. But the only other alternative would have been driving through a Willy Wonka chocolate river. And uh, yeah, uh, I can see why they don't want to make an underwater section brown. So uh, orange soda it is. But again, it's only a few seconds which is approximately how much longer the audience, audience has to live. I can maybe see why someone wouldn't like Hyrule Circuit too much if they weren't a Zelda fan, but I am a Zelda fan, so I'm contractually obligated. Look, I hear the Zelda music, my ears go burr. I see the coins replaced with rupees, my eyes go burr. I hear the treasure chest music while the items were let spinning and the da na 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 and my ears go burr again. It's mostly my ears doing the burring, I can't help it. The only complaint that I have is immediately offset by my biggest praise. The only Zelda enemies present on the track are reskins. Like, I get they were picked because this was easier than programming all new enemies for one track, but come on, Zelda enemies are really rad. They're creatures from Ganon, and they're pretty bad. Octorots, Tektites, and Leavers too! But then, there's the Master Sword section of the track, which is a brilliant way of incorporating Zelda puzzle solving in a Mario Kart course. It's also probably the only way of incorporating Zelda puzzle solving in a Mario Kart course. Uh, any other idea I had is incredibly obnoxious and unfun. But they found the only way, and it's cool! When you hit all three speed bumpers on the staircase, a shortcut boost over the Master Sword appears and disappears shortly after until the three bumpers get hit again. And this creates the ultimate trust fall exercise of all time. Imagine you hit two of the bumpers, but miss one. You know there's a player not too far behind you. Do you drive straight towards the sword, putting faith in that player that they'll reach said bumper in time and hit it, thus letting you take the boost? Or do you just make the turn and not risk crashing right into a wall? This is the one instance of Mario Kart RNG I am 100% okay with, and I never thought I'd live till the day I said that. The only way this course could be better is if it had a pit stop. And it was a pit stop that was run by Beetle. Moonview Highway is another one of those tracks I used to not really see the appeal of. I just thought it was yet another traffic course. Not that that's a bad thing. I love playing in traffic as we've discussed, but this just seemed like another one, you know? Like been there, done that. Only difference is we're not at the Berlin Wall this time, but whatever. But then we hit the second half of the lap and I'm suddenly all in. Successfully hitting all of these boost pads while simultaneously dodging the traffic, weaving between the walls and the tunnel, being perfect with it up until you return to the finish line, and the placement of the boosts is randomized each time so you really gotta pay attention to where they are every other race. Do I need to tell you I like racing here on 200cc? No, I don't. This is my favorite traffic course in the game, it isn't even close. Unless subway trains count as traffic, in which case, this is my favorite traffic course in the game and it is super -de duper -de close. Like, I'll admit, I still like Toad's Turnpike, but the N64 one was way more threatening. Here I get hit by trains all the freaking time. I think I get hit by them more than I've fallen off of all five of the Rainbow Roads combined. I don't know if my 20 years of experience just likes to disappear on this course specifically or what. And I can't help but also give mad points to that subway map. Like, no one's actually reading this whole thing in the middle of a race, but I respect the attempts to make the Mario Kart tracks actual places that are connected. Even though I have to call bull on some of them. Like, yeah, okay, Dolphin Shoals and Cheap Cheap Beach next to each other makes perfect sense. But some psycho chose in between Bowser's Castle and Rainbow Road to build Baby Park. And the final stop on the blue line, right after Sweet Sweet Canyon, is Bone Dry Dunes. This? leads immediately to this. What the hell was in that orange soda? You know what, I take the praise back. I think this subway is haunted. Uh, this should have been the actual haunted track instead of Twisted Mansion. Which incidentally is a hop, skip, and a jump away from where the cows live. Which explains a lot about the cows. Daisy Cruiser is another course I feel just kind of speaks for itself. Like, every part is a banger. Driving past or through the swimming pool, the legendary dining hall segment that now has people actually sitting at the tables as they go back and forth, and none of them give the tiniest damn about it. Falling down to the lower deck for additional items, and I, for one, don't mind that this is an underwater segment because it implies that, despite the calm vibes the rest of the track has, this ship is, in fact, ever so slowly sinking. 
And that's funny to me. It's a good thing the Goombas already have floaties. They'll need them. Hopefully everybody in the dining hall can find some too, but uh, I get the feeling they still won't care. Number two on my original top 10, and it's a course based around the most boring, heinous, undesirable place ever. No one has fun here. And yet someone on the track design team said, you know what we should have Mario drive through? A TSA security checkpoint. I know, I would have fired that man too. And yet somehow, they made an awesome course out of it. Tricking off of luggage conveyor belts, driving through an airplane, taking a glide ramp to soar past airplanes, taking off or landing. Do the airplanes count as traffic? Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U family of systems and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch family of systems really makes you feel like a little airplane boy. And Sunshine Airport was the first to do that whole wider connection thing with the tracks before Super Bell Subway did it too. Except this time, they're not trying to gaslight me into believing that these two share a zip code. On that same note, I also gotta give it up for the airport intercom messages, which I knew existed, but because you could only hear them in one part of the track and likely won't hear them over the music and other sound effects, I never knew what they were saying until I finally looked them up during the making of this video. But now that I have, I now know that the reason Birdo wasn't in Mario Kart 8 initially is because her flight got delayed for 3,206 days. Passenger Ms. Birdo, please proceed to the information counter on floor 2. Pretty sure there was a Tom Hanks movie about this exact thing. Every time I play through Wild Woods, I always believe the verticality of this course is way more than it actually is. Like, I feel like I'm going up this tree forever, but I'm really not. The anti-gravity is really just the quarter of the track that the start line is placed at, and that's at the highest point. The anti-grav turns off pretty quickly after that, but for some reason, I'm always surprised. I don't know, whatever. This track is absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. Chalk up another point to this one for a track I want to go out of bounds on, except instead of driving this time, I want to walk on foot and enter these little houses and chat with the shy guys about ice skating and waterfalls or whatever it is they talk about. And a little river section culminating in some speed boosts, all for me. As a little treat, you shouldn't have. I once again apologize to Electrodrome. I still prefer it aesthetically and even musically, ironically enough, but factoring in all aspects that I can conceive, yeah, this fully surpasses it, no contest. What are said aspects that I can conceive? The keyboards play music when you drive over them. That's it. No, I'm lying. There's also these bounce boys, and you can time your tricks to when the boys bounce. I love the bounce boys, and if you're not paying attention or gliding over the bounce boys, they can be a surprisingly tricky obstacle in the heat of the moment sometimes. What else do I like? The music. The music in Music Park is cool. Who'da thunk it? Not sure about the park part of Music Park. Like, when you look over the edge of the map, all you see is a sea of stars over an endless abyss. Like, where, where the hell actually are we? We're located right after Yoshi Circuit? Is it too late to kick the subway down 40 spots? Out of every retro course in base Wii U, Mario Kart 8 TikTok Clock might have received the biggest glow up in the jump to HD out of all the retro courses. Not that the others aren't a glow up, except maybe Piranha Play a Slide. You know, you can really only do so much for a sewer level, but this is next level. Before it was just a giant empty room with some clock-like structures floating in midair, and it's like, whatever, this clock would never wake daddy. But here, this isn't just the inside of a clock, it's like a whole clock factory. Like, dude, this clock would absolutely wake daddy. This might as well just be a new track. Like, obviously the layout's still mostly the same, but it's just night and day. I guess it also helps that it's fun to actually race on. And dodging all the pendulums and trying to decide if it's safe and worth it to drive over the stopwatch hands, and when the stars do align for that, it's immensely satisfying. But my favorite part of this course, is the liner notes of this course's song from the Mario Kart 8 official soundtrack. Quote, The clock is much bigger than in Mario Kart DS, so we decided to use an orchestra for this track. I don't know if this is a translation thing, or if I'm somehow misreading this, but what the f*** does that mean? Bigger clock equals orchestra? Like, like, what does that mean? If the clock wasn't bigger, you wouldn't have done an orchestra? If the clock was even bigger than it is, would one of you have went, oh, damn, does anybody have Hans Zimmer on speed dial? We're gonna need the big guns for this one. If the clock was shrunk down and made smaller instead, would the whole song have been done exclusively with a kazoo and shot glasses? <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for, huh? Why are you looking at me like I have a small clock? I don't. I don't have a small clock. My clock is huge! Number eight from the original top 10, Mount Wario. And I don't need to tell you that it all being one big lap really, really does it a lot of favors. It's a pretty standard theme and it honestly doesn't scream Wario at all. 
except for some balloons at the very, very end. Like, yep, I, that's, I guess Wario owns that balloon, sure. But it makes up for it in variety and then some. And the verticality on this one is real too. I feel like I'm going down this mountain forever and ever, even though it's really only like two minutes. But boy howdy, do we get a fair bit done in those two minutes. The first part is just kind of okay, but the music's carrying. Once we get into the cave though, all bets are off. We get this cool gliding section, we have speed boosts over waterfalls, we have this part in the trees that can be deceptively tricky to navigate sometimes without bonking on at least one tree, culminating in the final stretch with multiple trick opportunities and this crazy boost pad hill. Most of these elements don't sound like they make for the most engaging course on paper. It's not like there's really any actual dangers or obstacles besides some trees, but it all comes together really nicely for a satisfying time. And here's a front runner for favorite unintended shortcut in the game. It only really saves fractions of a second and the angle can be a bit tricky, but you can barely jump past this tree to barely hit this boost panel. It's great. I love it so so much it makes me want to mount Wario. I only brought up 200cc 200 times in this video, so it should come as no surprise to you that 200cc plus an F0 themed level that's all about speed is this high up on this list. There's fast, way too fast, and galaxy level falcon punch fast. Uh, this course doesn't quite reach that third one, but eh, close enough. And as someone who despises coins being an item, but is otherwise indifferent to the coin mechanic in general, having the energy panels from the F-Zero game serving as coin panels in this game is pretty genius. I wouldn't mind if these appeared in a couple of future non-F-Zero themed courses, as long as they fit the theme still. And did I mention 200cc yet? No? Well good! In case I didn't, this course let me outrun a blue shell for 30 seconds! You're welcome, and good night. What's better than going down a mountain? Going up a mountain? and then back down a mountain. So not gonna lie, I have DK Summit and DK Mountain pretty much right next to each other, and it's more or less a tie. Outside of the weather and Summit having the raddest Shy Guys alive, they're pretty much the same track and give me the same vibe. These both switch back and forth with each other every day, but this video has to come out sometime this century. So for now, you caught me on a day where Summit is just barely ahead. Although DK Mountain, do got that fence shortcut though. It can take a bit of practice, but you'll eventually hit a rhythm with it, and it feels so good every time. And feels even better when you do it and are still able to decently make the turn. Summit has a similar shortcut, albeit with no fence, which you think would make it even easier, and yet I'm somehow still ass at that one. But yet, yeah, Summit wins for the time being. It'll probably fall below Mountain like five more times before this video comes out, but for the time being, uh, the answer is the Radish Shy Guy's alive. Pretty much everything I said about Mute City applies to Big Blue because of course it does. Granted, I don't have footage of me outrunning a blue shell here, but I'm sure it's doable. Even parts of the track that don't have speed boosts still have flowing water or conveyor belts that propel you forward. Like, this track doesn't want you to stop. It wants you going at least way too fast at all times. The whole time this amazing rendition of the big blue theme that I've loved since all the way back in Melee is blaring through my speakers. Oh, and... It's all one lap. If they add more F-Zero courses into another Mario Kart title, we need to go full F-Zero and make it so that if you fall out once, that's it. It's over. You lost. Mario Kart Hardcore. Nintendo, hire this man. It's me. I'm this man. If you thought having DK Summit and DK Mountain right next to each other on a list was the craziest thing you've seen on YouTube in the last five minutes, well... I have three Rainbow Roads ranked back to back to back. I'm gonna make you taste that rainbow. But then wait, hold on. That means that there isn't a rainbow road in the top 10? But how? We're, we're so close! There's gotta be some kind of mistake here somewhere. Let's, let's just get on with it for now. We'll figure it out as we go along. First up, SNES Rainbow Road. The second course next to Calamari Desert that I talked about my friends picking all the time because they hate me, but are aware murder is illegal. And I mean, a train barely saved us the first time, but joke's really on them this time. This stage rocks. It's so good, I love it almost as much as the hills in the background. I know mountains in Mario randomly have eyes and are sentient sometimes, but these guys are literally having their own EDM light party over there. The hills are alive with the sound of people falling off Rainbow Road to their death repeatedly. I've been playing Mario Kart for 20 years. I genuinely rarely fall off of any Rainbow Roads anymore. Except this one. It's the only rainbow road to have zero railings, and there's the one ramp shortcut that even I ain't stupid enough to try on 200cc. I know, 
Gasp on your own time. This is the rainbow road that Lakitu actually has to earn his paycheck on when I'm on the scene. Anyway, ramp aside, I still love playing this one on 200cc. This is the only rainbow road I feel remotely threatened by. Every single rainbow road should have absolutely no railings, and I feel incredibly strongly about this. If the next Mario Kart's rainbow road has even one railing, it'll be a failure. Somebody mod every rainbow road in this game to not have railings. No, I don't know what you're gonna do about the satellite conveyor belt part of the Wii U Rainbow Road. Figure it out. This course has appeared the most times in the whole series, tied with Mario Circuit 3 for some reason. And for Britney's sake, she better hope they bring it back a sixth time, or else, God forbid, she'll have to actually think up some new material. And for the next Rainbow Road, Cloudtop Cruise! So I think there was a translation error. Okay, jokes aside, I'm serious. Cloudtop Cruise is a better rainbow road than this game's actual rainbow road. Just replace the vine roads and the road in the storm with rainbows. Boom. That's it. Rainbow Road. Every Rainbow Road up until now has taken place in space or at night, but who says we can't have one taking place in the sky during the day? Who says a Bowser airship can't show up? Who says there can't be a rainbow inside of a storm? I'm serious, again, I like the Wii U Rainbow Road, but everything I mentioned about how a Rainbow Road can try new things and still be a Rainbow Road is literally right here. Replace some parts with a rainbow, not all of them, we can at least keep half the clouds and the ship intact for that new variety I was talking about, but yeah, Bada boom, bada bing. Heck, half the song on this track is a Gusty Garden Galaxy remix. Gusty Garden Galaxy? Galaxies being those things that are in space? Maybe I'm stretching a teeny weeny bit, but I feel it in my heart. This is a Rainbow Road in spirit. Could have literally been a Rainbow Road with those couple changes I mentioned, and I think a lot of people would have really dug it. As is, still pretty good. And by pretty good, I of course mean it was number one on the original top 10 and has only fallen 12 spots. So pretty good. And I gotta give a shout out to the storm section, which still to this day looks rad as hell. And you really gotta pay attention to the boost pads to make sure you don't get struck by lightning. Also, there's rain. That's right, baby. We're putting the rain in Rainbow Road. <laughs> but a Rainbow Road in spirit still loses to a rainbow road that is real and actually exists and isn't a figment of my hyperactive imagination. <gasps> Go figure. Guys, this is the best rainbow road in the game, except for one. In fact, this is the best rainbow road of the whole series, except for one. Just, you know, again, get rid of the rails. But other than that, we move it. It says a lot when in the vacuum of space where there isn't a town or party hills or toad astronauts in the background, this is still somehow one of the most beautiful tracks in the game. And there's Star Bits, which by default makes this a more fitting Rosalina course than her own Ice World. What else do I say? Rainbow Road music, good. Rainbow Road fun to race on. I talked about why Rainbow Road is always awesome three other times already. <coughs> Four times. This one just also happens to have Mario Kart Wii nostalgia behind it too. Not much I can do about that, TBH. <sighs> Speaking of Mario Kart Wii nostalgia, Coconut Mall. I don't have an intro. I don't have an outro. I don't have a tro. Why do we like this course so much? Do we like this course? I'm starting to think this is a government conspiracy of some kind. They're broadcasting airwaves that make us think we like this course more than we do. I'm sitting at my computer for half an hour telling myself, Chris, write one sentence, something, anything. Anything other than memes, lol, crying emoji, explaining why this is above Rainbow Road. And all that played in my head in response is a hundred different disembodied voices all saying, You just got coconut mauled. 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 <laughs> you just got coconut mauled. Acabaste de recibir coconut mauled. Oh God, please, Chris. Talk about something. Talk about how all the turns and tricks are immensely satisfying to pull off. Talk about the legendary mushroom shortcut through the store. Talk about the legendary music that is simultaneously a shitpost and unironically catchy at the same time. Talk about how the parking lot initially sucked d until Nintendo surprisingly and uncharacteristically updated it so the cars do a spinny maroon now, and it's epic. Talk about how the worst version of Coconut Mall out of three is still better than 85 other courses and will continue to be one of the most popular and iconic courses in Mario Kart history from here on. Just talk about something! Oh. That was one sentence. Okay. I mean, it was a long run-on sentence, but it was a sentence. Good enough for me. 
Because we're almost done. I am coming. We finally reached the top 10. The S tier. Or, as I called it in Tier Maker, oh. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oops, the light was actually Molten Lava from Grumble Volcano. I know, Grumble Volcano. We've already knocked out two of the three Mario Kart Wii Holy Trinity courses, and Grumble Volcano is nowhere near them for the majority of people. I hear you all grumbling about it. This course has always been a soft spot for me, for one incredibly big, stupid reason. This course's claim to semi-fame is that pieces of the track sink into the lava as the laps progress, which is already an awesome idea. But when I was a kid playing this on Mario Kart Wii, my brain took this a step further. I firmly believed, despite having zero proof and never testing it, that if the race went on for too long, the entire track would start to sink. So every time I played on this course, I hauled ass. Hauled so much ass that I never saw the whole track sink like it was definitely supposed to. I'm so good at this game that that thing I thought was gonna happen despite never seeing it happen, never happened. I'm the best at this game, unlike everyone who sucks. They definitely had that thing I thought was gonna happen despite never seeing it happen happen to them, because of course it would happen to them. They brought the happening upon themselves. By the time Grumbly Rumbly came back and ate though, the delusion was definitely gone by this point. I knew for a fact I was living a fantasy. You can stay at the starting line for the rest of your life and be just fine. You can build real estate at the starting line and never have to worry about it sinking into lava ever. And yet, despite now knowing the whole track doesn't sink, to this day, every time I play this course, I still act like it does. Even with the knowledge, the feeling never went away. The oppressive atmosphere and music, the fireballs that come raining out of the sky, the parts of the track that do sink for super duper realsies, everything still comes together to really up the amount of tension. So much so that I can't help but play this track as if that old myth I randomly came up with was true. Granted, I play every track like that, aka as a sweaty tryhard. You wanna know why everyone online keeps kicking your ass? It's because they pretend every track is Grumble Volcano, and you too can become a Mario Kart Pro with these one easy steps. This track is an adrenaline rush I've yet to get tired of. It was number five on the original top 10, and as of now, the only one to barely remain in it. Mario Kart 8 only had one Super Mario Kart course in it when it first came out. By this point, they had already brought back most of those courses in prior games, and it's not like most of the course themes were that exciting to begin with. Plus, they knew they had other more popular Mario Kart games with varied track designs to work with, so they rightfully, IMO, brought over just one course as some form of an obligation and then moved on. Even as a couple more started very slowly trickling in as DLC, we still only ever got four. One of them is Rainbow Road, which is cheating. But the other two are so bland and boring, I forgot I already talked about them in this very video. I had little hope that Wave 6 would include another SNES course, and I certainly didn't even bother entertaining the mere thought that even if it did, it would be any higher than C tier. And I was partially correct. They did bring back an SNES course, and it's in the top 10, what the f I don't know how they did it, but they actually did it. Pretty much take everything I just said about Grimble Volcano, minus the whole sinking thing, and then triple it. This course is a bit on the shorter side, but so much is crammed in it hardly matters. Even factoring in Rainbow Road, this is probably the biggest glow up they've ever given to a Super Nintendo track. We're not even inside of the castle. This is just the dude's front yard, and shit is this insane. The best part of the track might actually be the beginning with these multiple paths you can take, either prioritizing going faster or getting more items. But then there's the thwomps to avoid, including some you can trick off of, holy moly. And this part that puts everyone's favorite mushroom bridge shortcut to shame. I, I can't believe they made me love an SNES course that isn't Rainbow Road. How dare they? They better not ever do it again. Unless it's Bowser Castle 2. The one with the dead end for no reason? They should bring that back, but do not turn it into a glider shortcut. Leave it as is. I want to see how many unsuspecting suckers take that path online week one and laugh at their misery. I've thrown the word pleasant around multiple times, but this time, it's not just pleasant. It's wholesome. It does not get more wholesome than Animal Crossing. 
It's fucking Animal Crossing. Like, forget wanting to go out of bounds and walk into their houses in Mario Kart. Let me just go boot up New Horizons right now instead. I'm so out of bounds, I'm on a completely different cartridge. I do have a weird relationship with Animal Crossing where, while I like and deeply appreciate the games when I do play them, ever since the Wii game, I just start up the latest entry, do whatever the cheesiest, quickest method of earning bells was for like a month or two, pay off my house to Tom Nook, and then stop playing. Yeah, a bit of a weird way to play these games, but for one or two months every new Nintendo console generation, except for one, I am at peace. No I remember my favorite neighbor from New Leaf, Tia. She kept trying to move out. She kept saying over and over, I'm thinking about moving out and getting you out of my life, Chris, you piece of sh She didn't say that. But uh, she kept trying to move out and I kept saying, no, Tia, stay, stay, stay. And then there was one day, one day where I didn't have time to play. And then I logged in the following day and Tia moved out. She moved out and I never played Animal Crossing again until the next game came out, which was incidentally right as the world started becoming on fire forever and ever. And I was at peace once more. So yeah, the feelings and memories of other Animal Crossing games make me appreciate this track. But I feel like even if I hadn't played them, I'd still fully appreciate and get lost in the simplicity and comfiness of this track. The mushrooms are replaced with fruit, the balloon section is adorable, the seasons change randomly, and thank god it isn't based on what time of year it is in the real world, otherwise the snow variant would only be here for three months, and this track would fall back down a whole tier by default. And Mr. Rossetti is an obstacle? That, and I mean this with no exaggeration, is the greatest obstacle in Mario Kart history. It's perfect. The only way it could be more perfect is if your rage quit the race, Rossetti comes out of your Switch and kills your whole family. Wholesome track. Bring it back in the next game and put Tia in it. Regardless of what your opinions on Tor are, or your opinions on most of its unique courses, whether they're IRL or not, I think we can all agree, Ninja Hideaway needs to come back in the next Mario Kart. Immediately. No delay. This feels... Nothing like a Mario Kart Tour course. This feels nothing like a Mario Kart course in general, and I mean that in the best way. The amount of different paths you can take is insane, and you can keep going back and forth between lower and higher paths for the whole race. The architecture on the outside looks awesome, the indoor dojo parts are rad as hell, you can do tricks pretty much everywhere, even on parts of the floor that look like they have no business being trickable. And while I think there was some missed potential in getting ninjas involved, they did go with the next best option. That's right. More Shy Guys. But these ones are even more rad than DK Summit because they can turn into banana peels. Eh, it's not that impressive when I say it out loud like that. But it's cool when it happens during a race. And funny. I mean, cool. This course is so great, it's actually almost a detriment to every other tour course. They really peaked on wave one. Unless we count... Yoshi's Island, which did appear in this game first before being added to Tor, but it was clearly made with Tor in mind and was added to Tor very shortly afterwards. But who cares? This track, I once again have to default to you have eyes, use them. I respect the original Yoshi's Island game more than I like playing it, if that makes any sense. I don't dislike playing it, I just have way more fun with Mario and Donkey Kong Country personally. But the aesthetics of Yoshi's Island? No contest. They are so unique and charming and have been perfectly translated to 3D. The only other competition having been Smash Brothers and Sonic Lost World for some reason. And they actually added a new enemy that isn't a reskin. It is a shy guy again, but he's walking around on stilts. So he's a stilt guy. That's even more rad than a shy guy. The whole course is a visual delight, and every bit of it is some kind of reference to the OG Yoshi game. It's like a best of compilation condensed into 60 seconds. And the ending gliding section where you can try to hit this surprisingly slippery cloud to create a shortcut path, sort of similar to the shortcut from Hyrule Circuit, incredible. This whole level is a joy. I'm never not having a good time on here. Aw, oh, don't get me started on the music. This might be the best rendition of the Yoshi's Island theme of all time. This is the best tour, but not really a tour, but still a tour course ever. Unless we count... Why? Why is one of the best Mario Kart courses, not just in this game, but in the whole series, have to take place in a fucking bathroom? Bathrooms are not the most exciting thing in the world. I locked myself in a bathroom for 24 hours and did research to prove this. Look. <laughs> See, 
No happiness in my soul. Bathrooms are for brushing your teeth, fighting a hangover, and maybe, once in a blue moon, sexy times. But this game is not rated M for Mature, it's rated M for Mario. So, we unfortunately have to ignore that part. But, if there's one thing I love more than snow, more than rain, more than Tia, more than playing in traffic, more than saxophones, more than the democracy building itself, it is when you are shrunk down and have to explore an otherwise regular sized location, but now with an all new grand sense of scale. I love it when any video game does this, but even if we just keep it to examples of times Mario does it. Giant Land in Mario 3, Tiny Huge Island in Mario 64, the entire premise of Mario Party DS. This is another Chris cheat code, and if it has to be used on a bathroom, so be it. But they really didn't pull punches here. As soon as Lakitu says go, we're already drowning ourselves in the kitchen sink. And then we decide that wasn't nearly enough. And we go drown ourselves in the bathtub instead. And then we decide that wasn't enough either. And we try to go drown ourselves in the toilet. But we end up tricking off of the toilet water instead. I want this part of the track screen capped and framed and put in the Smithsonian, okay? Again, I really cannot believe I'm saying this about a bathroom. But this really is one of the most creative courses in the series. Like, even just looking at how items like shampoo bottles and towels are laid out to act as track barriers, I can firmly believe this is a course a kid would try to make for their Hot Wheels cars or something in real life. I mean, they would have to remove the drain part. That wouldn't work at all. And, uh... You definitely leave the toilet alone too. Or you could just build your Hot Wheels track in your bedroom like a normal kid. Oh, okay, excellent. Ribbon Road is pretty much perfect. Much like Cheeseland from the same game, this too drastically changed. Although, unlike Cheeseland, this is pretty much the absolute best thing they could have ever done. And we're shrunk down again. And it's pretty much freaking Toy Story. I literally could not believe what I was looking at when I first played this course back on Wii U. There is so much detail, so many little things to pick up on. To this day, I'm still noticing some details I haven't picked up on before. The Toad toys that are actually mini Toads from the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series. The Yarn Yoshi plushies on the shelves in the background. The cart blueprints over the desk. The Bowser archways that begin and end the part of the track with toy Mega Koopas. The Luma archways that begin and end the part of the track that's an anti Gravity segment on the only part of the ribbon that floats and has a shade of blue similar to Rosalina's dress, which makes us a better Rosalina track than. And my favorite being that two of the three carts represented as toys on the track also just coincidentally happened to be the best in the Mario Kart 8 meta at one point or another. And they just so happen to fit the theme here. Unintentional, for sure, but amazing nonetheless. The boost shortcuts along the Rosalina ribbon are also usually pretty tricky for me to line up, but immensely satisfying when I do. One of my favorite shortcuts in the whole game. Culminating in this fun gliding section with the best obstacle in this game that isn't Mr. Rossetti. And we have one of the best Mario Kart courses of all time. It's literally everything that makes a Mario Kart track good rolled into one. How do I still have three left? Oh, right. The Mario Kart Wii Holy Trinity still has one unaccounted for. That partially explains everything. So let's do it, baby. Maple Treeway is somehow a pleasant course that still has high-octane parts, like shooting yourself out of a cannon, dodging the giant wigglers, and my favorite part that persists throughout the majority of the track, checking the leaf piles for mushrooms. Not every pile has a mushroom, it's random, and even when you do find one, you still gotta actually pick the mushroom up. But odds are you won't be at a good angle. But when the stars align and you are able to use the mushrooms immediately, it's incredible. Doing it while still in the aforementioned wiggler section? Even incredible er. And I'm sure someone who actually knows fancy musical terminology could explain this better than me, but this theme is just fire. Again, much like the course itself, it's simultaneously a pretty laid back track, but still totally working for an intense race. Like if I hopped on a motorcycle and did 88 miles per hour down an autumn road while listening to this song, it would all come together. But I don't drive motorcycles, and autumn in New York always looks like ass. And I'm busy doing dumb sh** like this. It's called a road, it's called a rainbow road. It is a road that you can- yeah! Like really, the only thing missing from the Wii version is the bouncy rope bridge at the end. The glider replacement makes complete sense and is still cool, but still. But it's not nearly as much of a detriment as was in the cases of Coconut Mall and Koopa Cape. Maple Treeway is still one of the best Mario Kart courses ever made. They'd have to really try to mess this one up. Unlike DS Waluigi Pinball, which is literally impossible to mess up, this is the perfect Mario Kart course. Okay, fine. It has no shortcuts at all, but, but that's it. 
That's it. That's the one negative. It still sits rightfully atop its throne. Like, this is the only course in this game where I can say I'm not just racing against the other racers. I'm racing against the course itself. This pinball machine may not be sinking into a volcano, but it is, in fact, doing a pinball. And I love trying to get ahead of the pinballs that go down the track each lap. I don't always succeed. They leave very little wiggle room for error, but when I do, it is immaculate to know that I am literally faster than the course itself. In fact, I take it back. In a weird way, I consider going fast enough to get past the pinballs a shortcut. Does that make sense to you? It doesn't? I don't care. But that means now I have no negatives. This is the one course where no one would mind if it came back in every Mario Kart game from now on. Everyone would be completely okay with it. Unlike Coconut Mall, where I'm convinced at least 20% of the hype is partially ironic, even though the course is still great, there is no such delusion here whatsoever. How can you beat perfection? By being perfect and also being a Rainbow Road. 3DS Rainbow Road is the best Rainbow Road in the whole series. It's the best track in the whole series. It will never not be either of these two things. I've been slightly hyperbolic in some spots on this list, mostly for the first two thirds. For as much as I do like Mario Kart, some slight over-exaggeration was really the only way I was gonna be able to get through writing 23,000 words. Even in the top 10, I wouldn't put it past myself that there was at least 1% of hyperbole subconsciously hiding in each segment somewhere. 3DS Rainbow Road, is the one time I can say with my whole chest, this is perfection. This isn't a Mario Kart track. This is a journey. A journey that I will vote for every single time. While one comedian in the lobby votes for Toad Circuit and the game will choose it no good. That's great, it's cool, I'm fine! It really needs to be played to be believed. I know that's a cop out. I know you could say that about most of my top 10 and A tiers, but the ethereal music, driving down the planets, tricking down onto the moon, going through this space tunnel, and all concluding in the best gliding section in the whole game. Even back in Mario Kart 7, I knew this was a gaming core memory, and I knew it was never gonna be topped for me. Nintendo knew this too. That's right, I can speak with Nintendo's whole chest too. They put this Rainbow Road in Smash 4 and only took it out of Ultimate because it would have made the other 100 stages look bad and they didn't want to hurt Han and Bo's feelings. Perhaps the day will come where this course is barely topped. A Rainbow Road with an exciting new twist. But until then, I'm gonna sit back and enjoy peak Mario Kart. And that's before we even talk about 200cc. This is probably my favorite course on 200cc. Have I told you guys I like 200cc? And that's the video. Do you agree with number... 73? Because I do. I remember what I wrote down. Let me know if you agree with number 73. And I stand by it. What... What is number 73? GBA Mario Circuit. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> I stand by that one. That's the one with the, go, that's the one with the pit stop, baby. Yeah, let's fucking go. Well, okay. Hey, uh, before I accidentally hurt myself, uh, hey, make sure to like and comment on the video uh, and uh, make sure to subscribe. So that way you won't miss the next video, which I'll have out before the next Mario Kart game comes out. Uh, all right, this, th this whole video didn't matter at all. Sonic All-Stars transformed is way better. Okay, bye!